Welcome to Ash Chess Arts. So today I'm gonna do another bracket battle, but this one is quite different. As here we have multiple different art forms. So the topic of this bracket battle is my favorite art across multiple different art forms. So we have some paintings here, some architecture, films, music, and literature and TV shows. And they are all gonna go against each other. So we have 16 different pieces of art here, many different things, and there is one particular battle here that is gonna be insanely difficult for me, and I have no idea how I'm gonna choose which one I'm gonna, which one is gonna win. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be brutal. But we'll see how this goes, and I'm sure that there are many other brutal battles here. I didn't look at them that carefully yet, and again, the matchups have been shuffled. As always, yeah. But we are gonna start with my favorite book of all time against my favorite metal album of all time and a top three album in general. So it's Yori Carl Wisman's novel Against Nature versus Opeth's Ghost Reveries. So while I don't necessarily have like a ranked list of my favorite books, but again, if I had a gun to my head and if somebody asked, what is my favorite, number one favorite, I would say this one. And again, I have this Penguin edition and that's what I read. I think there are some, there are at least a couple of translations of this. So I don't know whether this one was the best translation, but it definitely worked for me. Yes, I absolutely adore the language of the book. But here you can read the lot of it. Again, I believe this is the same text that is in the back of the Penguin edition that I would highly recommend. Okay, Penguin editions are good, they have nice introductions and everything, and a decent quality and of course very cheap, so yeah. But I basically love this because the kind of humorous, snobby side of my brain really relates to, relates to this book because it's about this kind of an asshole aristocrat who it's all about luxury and excess, and he talks about art and his kind of his own philosophy and stuff like that. And it's written in such a perfect kind of typical French French style of writing that I absolutely adore. And again, one of the best things about French literature is just the style. Sometimes you don't even have to care about the plot or anything of the characters because the style is so beautiful that you want to read the books even if you don't really care what happens but because the style is so beautiful and I think that's quite extraordinary that you can kind of keep a person hooked just with the style but of course I this one I love like ev absolutely everything about the style again the commentary there the snobbiness everything because it just kind of speaks to me and I was kind of laughing the whole time I read this because it was like reading a better version of my own thoughts or something yeah but but yeah again i need to read this I need to read this one again uh, i'm not much of a re-reader not because i don't want to reread just because i have such a huge backlog of books that i haven't read at all so i haven't been doing much rereading in my life yet but this is one one of the first ones that i want to reread because i love it love it so much yeah, we highly recommend this to everybody. It's not a very long book. You can read this in a couple of days, I think, or depending on your how much time you have and stuff. But it's only like 200 pages and it's so entertaining that you kind of want to just read and read more. Yeah. Of course, it has fairly dense, dense language in a way, so it would be good to kind of take, take your time with it too. But but it's definitely something that hooks you in, at least hooked me in. And of course, this is a classic, but this isn't like a one of the like really huge classics like Le Miserable or Crime and Punishment or Pride and Prejudice. But I think this deserves to be become like even more of a classic. And I would highly recommend the other Huisman, Huisman's classic La Bas as well. That's that's great. Again, if I can show it here, maybe. Uh, yeah, there's Labas. And that has a penguin edition too, which I also 
Tervetta Pingvin Edition, but yeah. But who is Mans? What a great writer. But this album is very important for me as well. I don't know why it doesn't show my rating, which is five stars, but um, but yeah, this used to be even my favorite album of all time, but we are gonna talk about the album that is my favorite album now, but it's still on my top three, and like I said, it's my favorite metal album, which says a lot, because I've listened to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of metal albums, and, it, and it's one of my favorite genres of music, so yeah, but this is also maybe sonically top three metal albums of all time. It, has beautiful dynamics with those death metal moments and with those beautiful, lush, melancholic acoustic moments. As a perfect track list, has some of their best songs like Ghost of Perdition and Reverie Harlequin, Forest and Isolation Years is one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard, and that's obviously not a metal song at all. But yeah, this to me was open speak, even though they made so many masterful records, but but yeah, again, what a great listen front to back. I really have absolutely nothing to complain about this album because it sounds perfect. The songwriting is perfect. The performances are perfect. Everything about it is perfect. Absolutely adore this album. And again, I'll have to go with Ghost Reveries because again, music is my favorite art form. And it connects with me more emotionally and even in terms of enjoyment than, than literature in general. But again, Against Nature is my favorite book. I absolutely loved reading it. It made me so happy when I was reading it and I've never laughed so much when I've been reading a novel. So yeah, so I would highly recommend Against Nature to everybody. Yeah, gonna, gonna go with Ghost Reveries. Then we have possibly my favorite piece of architecture against my possibly my favorite painting of all time. So this Santa Maria del Fiore. Is the Cat Cathedral in Florence, which I think I can mention briefly in the podcast I did with Altes, and then I talked about the Flower Night in my first painting video. So it's a short Rose Cross painting, and Rose Cross is one of my favorite painters, but this is actually very hard to compare like my favorite architecture against my favorite paintings. But but this is a very famous Building again, I've never seen it in person, unfortunately, but I would love to visit Italy. I would love to visit Florence, Venice, Rome, and so many other places in Italy. Mostly due to that kind of art history and architecture and museums and stuff like that. And food would be cool to taste authentic pizza and yeah, stuff, but but yeah, look at this fucking building, it's absolutely gorgeous. And it's pretty big as well. I'm not sure how much my picture is blocking this. Hopefully not. But the odds are that you have seen this building um, before. I saw in social media like a picture of this and somebody said that you really should visit Rome. But I was thinking that what that is a picture of Florence and not Rome. Yeah. I mean, look at this building, like it's so, so beautiful. Do we have some great inside pictures of it? Because it looks beautiful inside as well. I mean, look at this, like, again, these are just some of the things that, that make you think that how humans can do something so genius, but yeah. Um, but I don't really know much about the history of this building or anything like that. I just lo love it aesthetically. But I would love to learn learn more about it as well. Yeah. But you can again look into it more if you care about architecture. And again, it's possible that some of my viewers have seen this in in person. Italy is such a famous and tourist location. So many people visit Italy sometime in their lives. So yeah. But then this one is just, oh, I love it so much. It's colorful, it's sensual, it's beautiful, it's wondrous. 
makes me happy. It gives me that sense of awe. Again, it's a male knight in middle of a bunch of women, but it still looks so gay for some reason. That's what I like about it too. It's from the late 19th century. And if you have watched my painting videos, you know that many of my favorite paintings and painters are from the 19th century for whatever reason. But yeah, I just absolutely adore everything about this painting. I don't think there is that much to analyze about it in terms of like themes or anything, but it's just pure beauty. And I, again, this is some article about it and painting that explodes visually and seeks no other pretension than the admiration of beauty. I think that's a good way to, to put it. And you know, I haven't read, read this article, so I don't know what it says, but yeah. But anyway, what a beautiful painting. And Shores Rose Cross is, uh, I mean, fairly well known, I think. You see see his stuff if you follow, like, kind of painting related stuff in social media and stuff. But I don't think he's as famous as he should be, as he made quite a few really beautiful paintings. And this is my favorite one. So, yeah. I mean, this is just so hard again i don't know how to compare architecture and painting this kind of just shows how stupid this idea for a video is because it's so hard to compare like different art forms together in a way of like pre preference um but again i just wanted to do this ridiculous thing and i think i might make this a series as well because i could put like lots of my favorites from across all the art forms against each other but yeah we'll see uh i don't know um i mean i think the architecture against santa maria de fiore is a monoway kind of marvel because it's such a kind of huge beautiful building but the flower night was it's a such a beautiful painting um fuck. i'm gonna go with the architecture this time but Again, I really can't choose. But the next battle is the one that absolutely kills my soul. Like uh, the OC, possibly my favorite TV show of all time that has influenced my life so much against my favorite album of all time that keeps curing depression and negativity in my mind because it's just pure beauty and bliss. Fuck. Uh, Yeah, this one is really something that I, I really have no idea which one I should choose. I mean, I've talked about both of these things so many times, but... But yeah, welcome to the OC pitches. This is how it's done in Orange County. It's constant sunshine is so banal. Look at them down there, so clean! So passionless! Taylor told me that you went to David Hume's archives in Edinburgh. Even I was impressed. Yeah, but let's let, let's not do the quotes again, but but yeah, this TV show has meant so much to me for almost 20 years at this point, so yeah. But this has been my favorite album for quite a while now. Yeah, the most beautiful album with my favorite singer of all time, Elizabeth Fraser. Her angelic vocals are just, oh, they hit so hard. Hit so hard, but this is such a beautiful album in terms of the soundscapes as well. And, and I could say that every single song on, on, on this album is one of my favorite songs of all time. It's, it seriously has only like five out of five songs in it. And I, I cannot say that from about like many albums so yeah because usually even my favorite albums have like maybe one or two songs that i mean i still like but don't love them the same way as i love the best songs but here i seriously just love absolutely every every song like cherry color funk and heaven or las vegas are probably my two favorites if i had to pick but but yeah um
I, mean, I could easily make argument for the OC just because it has been in my life for such a long time, but Heaven on Las Vegas has been in my life just for like two and a half years or something like that. So, but then again, music in general means more to me than TV shows, but but yeah. Mm. Uh, why can't we have ties in these things? I'm gonna go with the OC, with the nostalgia. Uh, but it's a tie, basically. Well, this, this one is a bit bit easier as um, it's my favorite film against my the film that I think is the greatest film of all time but of course favorite is the more personal thing but I'll talk about those a bit but I'll put some of these away hi bye heaven holas Vegas I'm sorry I'm sorry but at least you are gonna win the favorite albums bracket battle when you make an appearance on that so yeah I'm really sorry <laughs> um, but yeah, this is, again, if I had to answer a stupid question like what is the greatest film of all time, I would say the human human condition, even though you cannot really pick what is the single greatest films of all time, you can just say that yeah, these bunch of films are among the greatest, but you cannot really pick not a single one, at least in my opinion, but, but if I had to choose, it's just, I just love it due to the fact that it if you watch this trilogy, you can kind of learn most, the kind of most important things about humanity and the flaws of humanity, the flaws of states and ideologies and different philosophies and the flaws in the human condition, the human human character, but also lots of the good things about humanity as well, I guess, because and Gachi is a pretty decent person, although we just see that how these br brutal surroundings absolutely destroy destroy him. And that's the human flaw that we built these oppressive systems that corrupt human kindness and human beauty, etc. Well, at least we find out in this films that there is there are good ideas out there or at least better ideas obviously no, no ideas are perfect and there is love out there but but we have created a world that often just destroys those good things that's a very important lesson and while these are very dark films they also feel very accurate films and they just give us give Give us, give us these harsh truths that we need to learn, even though we never learn. I mean, some of us do, but not enough people do. Yeah. But yeah, they are also just beautifully shot, beautifully acted. Yeah, they, they are just absolutely perfect. They are very entertaining too, even though they are very dense stuff. You, When you finish one of these three films, you want to watch the other one. You might think that a 10th hour trilogy about like war and human corruption and dangerous ideas and oppressive systems etc would be like very hard to watch but these are actually very entertaining and thrilling films to watch so so yeah but this is my favorite film of all time it has made me cry it has give, 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 it has given me nightmares multiple of them actually yeah and it has um just entertained me more than pretty much any other films it's a complete package of emotional devastation fun humor beautiful visuals great performances nightmarish imagery nightmarish characters Sherry Lee gives one of the greatest performances ever here there are some of the most horrible scenes in cinema history in this film. But 
now that I have seen the film seven times, I've kind of gotten used to the more horrible stuff, but they used to absolutely fuck me up in the first like three times I watched this film. Like there was one time I watched it just before bed, and I really regret watching it because I got like absolutely paranoid because it's just it's just one that really fucks up your brain. Yeah, and I'm the kind of person that again horror films don't usually scare me at all, but these these David Lynch. Films definitely do so, yeah. But this film means absolutely everything to me. It also includes my favorite song of all time, Questions in a World of Blue, so by Julie Cruz, rest in peace. So, yeah, what a film. But then one of my top 20 films against one of my top three or top five books, Madame Bovary by Gustave Lebet. The Heroic Purgatory by Yoshida is a film that I have mentioned many, many times. It's one of these kind of pretty incomprehensible, impre- impenetrable art house films from Japanese. A new wave, extremely political film, extremely radical film, both in terms of the subject matter and the visual style. And the narrative style that again doesn't really make that much sense, or at least it doesn't seem to make that much sense. But this is a film that you could analyze to absolute bit because it just has so much in it, and as it is so radical and completely, completely its own thing, you can interpret it in many, many, many different ways. Yeah. Let's just look at this shot here too, like, yeah, it's just incredible, incredible, even though it's very alienating in a way, it's how it's shot, but I absolutely love that weird visual style. But yeah, what a, what a masterpiece. I be, I'll be watching this many, many times in the future. But this is a very important book for me, I absolutely adore this, and really makes me sad how low the average rating is in. Goodreads, but again, Goodreads has pretty ridiculous ratings in general. Again, the highly, the most highly rated books are like Harry Potter and Hunger Games and stuff like that. Again, young adult trash. Although I guess I shouldn't say because I haven't read them, but but that's definitely my perception of them. I might be wrong. I might be wrong, but I feel like I'm not. <laughs> but this is an incredible book. Like I kind of. Said it feels like it's kind of like a laugh or hate type of book because some people find it so boring. I don't know how you can find this so boring because it's so beautifully written. So even when not much is happening, the style Flaubert's absolutely beautiful perfectionist style sort of keeps you interested even when there aren't that, that many things happening. And it's of course about the kind of mind of Emma, Madame Bovary. And how she is so bored with life and how she has these big fantasies about life and how she's not again happy with anything and she has a nice husband who absolutely loves her but she doesn't really care she wants other men and bigger things so it's a very interesting exploration of that type of human mind that is always unsatisfied and and yeah, the story also is, is very, very good and very tragic in many ways, both for Emma, but also for, for Emma's husband, who absolutely loves her, but tries to be a good man. But, but yeah, what a, what a masterpiece, what a masterpiece. It's been a few years now since I read it, so I've forgotten some things about it, so hopefully I didn't say anything inaccurate about it, but but yeah, absolute masterpiece, beautifully written, great story, interesting themes, yeah, a masterpiece. Um, yeah, yeah, this is really difficult as well. Feels weird to compare 
films and books as well. Especially when the book is very different to this film. But I guess I go with the film this time, Heroic Purgatory. Ah, oh, sorry, Madame Bovary. But the next one is absolutely brutal. Brutal as well. And top three TV show against top ten album. So it's Kill More Girls. Yeah. Look at those to look at those two geniuses in that poster. Rory Gilmore and Lorelai Gilmore. Two of my favorite characters of all time. I don't really get the hate for Rory. I love her. I mean, I mean, I don't like some of her choices in the second half of the show, but but I still love her. But Lorelai, I absolutely love. Although I don't, I can't love all of her choices either, especially when when she cheats on Luke with Christopher and. When she goes back with Christopher, I wasn't a fan of that plotline, but because I think Lorelai and Luke are meant to be together, but of course they get back together. But I absolutely love Lorelai. Yeah, just she's my type of person. Yeah, very smart, funny, beautiful. Yeah, just like an angel, basically, even though she's very self centered, just like Rory is. But but with that type of person, I don't care if they are self-centered because their cells are so perfect that they kind of have the right to be self-centered. <laughs> yeah. But this is such a funny show, beautiful show, emotional show, full of great characters and Stars Hollow is such a fun candy floss town with these weird characters. But it's funny when Paris says that this town would make even Frank Capra puke or something like that. She says something like that, but, but yeah, she's she's right. And I love Paris a lot. She's a great character. But I liked her with Doyle. I think they made a great, great weird couple. Yeah, although she was in love with Tristan, Chad, Michael Murray, who is just uh, yeah. I wish. We could have gotten a comeback from Tristan. In the original series, obviously, he makes a very brief appearance in the in the uh, sequel series. But, but yeah, Tristan, Chad, Michael, Murray. I love him. <laughs> or not. The reasons why I love him are not the most honorable, but I love him. Yeah, but what a what a great show. I'll obviously be making content about this show in my As Just Talk Soap Operas series in the future, so look out for that. But this album means so much to me. Again, Julie Cruz is floating into the night. Oh, God. So many beautiful songs here. It has Mysteries of Love from one of my top 10 films of all time, Blue Velvet. It's a, it's a, it, it's a song that it's kind of a bittersweet. At least in many ways it makes me, sometimes it makes me really sad. Sometimes it makes me happy. Sometimes it's, it calls me down. Sometimes it helps with depression. Sometimes it makes me more depressed. So, so yeah, I kind of have a weird relationship with that song, but I absolutely adore that song. And it's one of my top 10 favorite songs of all time, definitely. And of course, there are many other Great songs here, like Rocking Back Inside My Heart is one of my absolute favorites. It's so beautiful. I love the, like, the last, maybe like 90 seconds of the track, like the vocals that Julie Cruz does in that kind of ending part. Oh, so beautiful. The whole song. But this album is just so lush and blissful. And it's just the definition of utter beauty, the definition of gorgeous. Definition of lostness. Definition of what is good in the world, <laughs> yeah. The Nightingale is obviously a classic track. Such a beautiful song. Into the Night, I think, is great. Into the night. And I love when it has that kind of dramatic two-second moment when the instruments get like really intense and then it kind of calms down. After that again. It's a bit hard to explain that part, but but yeah, I remember it's great falling. Obviously, 
It's a great, great track, but a beautiful, absolutely perfect album. I would change nothing about this album. It sounds perfect sonically. Julie Cruz has one of the greatest voices ever. Probably my second favorite singer. Okay, my top three singers are Elizabeth Fraser, Julie Cruz, and Björk, probably. So, yeah. Um, such a beautiful album. Fits many different moods. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad that the average rating has been going up. Yeah. What a masterpiece. But how the fuck am I gonna choose between these two? Uh, these, these two pieces of art. Both of these things mean everything to me. Both of them give me so much happiness. Fuck, I'm gonna go with Julie Cruise this time. I, I just have to. Like now that I'm thinking about Julie Cruise, it just gives me this uh, sense of awe just by thinking of it. So, yeah. Then another top 10 album of mine, Dead Caps Transatlanticism versus one of my absolute favorite paintings of all time. That is even part of my look of my channel page on YouTube. And I just made a video about my new channel page look and this painting is part of that so yeah goodbye kilo more girls again i'm sorry but yeah this is one of those depression albums for me those self-reflection albums those albums when i'm in my own head thinking about whatever <laughs> yeah I often also just listen to this when I go for walks because it's the, it has that kind of nice vibe for walks, especially when it's dark or cold or whatever. Yeah, a beautiful track list. I need you so much closer. Last answer sheet has one of the one of the best vocal performances of Ben Gibbard. So, so that's the lack of color, which was part of the first season of the OC kind of the, towards the end of the season when Ryan is really thinking what he should do when Teresa is pregnant and stuff Tiny Vessels I really love Title and Registration one of my absolute favorites The New Year has really fun it's a really fun song with great great lyrics yeah but this title track if I had to choose one song of this album is, is my favorite Absolutely beautiful stuff. I've cried to this album. And yeah, this album has just been with me through so many kind of big, big emotions and stuff. And I've listened to this album so, so much, but I, I never get tired of it. So yeah. But this painting, ah, oh, it's so beautiful. Obviously, in my channel background, I took this, I edited this woman's picture. Or this part of the, the woman part of this painting and put it to my channel background this just the use of color the painting technique i mean this pink dress everything about it is just beautiful oh, it's just kind of full of love and emotion there's a bit of that longing although i think this to me this looks like a pretty optimistic painting when you look at these poses it feels like these two people are just they are in love and they are talking about something beautiful that is what it says to me but i don't know what the intention of rainier lanes was when he painted this painting but, but this is a good example of why there are still many great visual artists today, even though many of my favorites happen to be stuff from the past centuries and decades. But but Rainier Lanes, I have to say, now that I have kind of introduced myself to much of his work, I have to say that he's definitely uh, up there with my favorite painters, probably in the top 10. But I would have a very hard time to create a top 10, but, but yeah. Yeah, this is one of my absolute favorites. Just utterly beautiful. Yeah, and hopefully Ryan and Lanes will continue to paint. Lots more great paintings. But I think I have to go with, with music. Yeah. 
Um, well, I'm gonna know co no, what I'm gonna go with here, but but it's kind of like with human condition five walk with me that I think Berlin Alexander Platz is definitely the greater thing out of two out of these two, but is it my favorite thing out of these two? So, but this is something that I would probably have in my sight and sound top ten ballot if I had to do that. This is like a a mix of that fast binder style, obviously as it is made by fast binder, but also it like Dostoevskian elements there. Yeah, it has that very uh, Dostoevskian visual sense to me, or at least what I kind of imagine the Dostoevsky stories to be in my mind when I read them. It has that kind of dark, very dark visual, visual that kind of brownish, grayish thing. But it also has that kind of very hypnotic look. So even though it do, looks quite dark, it also looks very beautiful. And it's a very interesting show in many ways. The main character Franz Bieberkov is this weirdo, awful guy, a criminal, very violent guy. But somehow he's kind of has that kind of childlike naivety about him in a weird way. And as he's so fucking stupid. There are kind of moments when we almost kind of root for him, even though we know that he is a complete piece of shit. But but as he has that kind of naivety, and the actor makes that great performance, it it's gonna kind of, be have a, like a weird relationship with his character. And there are some truly despi despicable characters here, like Reinhold. Yeah, great character, even though it's very despicable. It's a very slow moving series, but I don't think it's boring. I know some people find it boring, but I don't. The kind of climax of the show, the epilogue is so <laughs> intense and quite, quite, quite interesting and even darkly beautiful in a way. But yeah, this to me is a total masterpiece. It's very interesting you know, psychologically as well and. In some ways, this actually reminds me of The Sopranos in a way that Franz Bieberkov some, in some ways reminds me of Tony Soprano, actually. Obviously, Tony Soprano is also a complete piece of shit as a human being, but somehow we still root for him because he's quite quite funny and in some ways lovable, even though and he's awful. So those are very interesting contrasts with both of the characters. So but I would highly recommend this to everybody. It's 15 hours or something, so it's not an easy wash, but definitely worth it. But then, again, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, very near and dear to my heart, due to childhood nostalgia, and, and I still love to watch this all the time. It's just, I just love the world, love the characters. Like, this character here is my favorite character, Vegeta. I love Goku, Gohan. In terms of Super, I love Beerus and Bees a lot, and many other characters. Master Roshi is even funny, and Piccolo is interesting. Yeah, but, but yeah, this is just perfect entertainment. Somehow I even get emotional <laughs> to meet this trash quite often because I've been so hooked to the characters since I was a kid, so they mean so much to me. Of course, there isn't much like many interesting themes about this or this Dragon Ball, the Dragon Ball universe is quite trashy in many ways, but it's such important trash to me that I absolutely adore. So I have to say I have to go with Dragon Ball. I mean, Berlin Alexander Platz is way, way better, but in terms of like enjoyment, I'll go with Dragon Ball. Ghost Reveries. Uh, so, ah, uh, fuck. Possibly my favorite TV show against my favorite film. Ah, uh, yeah. Floating into the night. Transatlanticism. Um, the OC. These are, <laughs> I think these are actually back to back on my top 10. So I think if in the end I have to go. We're floating into the night. The OC. Um, so I guess the OC is my favorite piece of 
media, favorite art ever. Although I have to say that I still kind of, I regret a little bit not going with Heaven or Las Vegas because I have no idea which one I prefer. Actually, they are 50 50. Yeah. And also, Kill More Girls is really up there as well. But this time, the OC is gonna win. Yeah. I just bought Kislavski's Decalog on DVD. I don't know if you are a fan of Polish cinema, but we could binge watch it tonight. Yeah. It's like the martial arts. It's like the Moon and Bovary of martial arts cinema. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Beaches. In my time of distress. My little bash. Yeah. Love you, Beaches. Chetem. Shout out to Beaches, as always. My little bash. Hopefully you enjoyed this ridiculousness. I might do more episodes about like my favorite art across different art forms, but these are these are a bit too hard to make. Although this is just stupid fun again. Like I said, I could have easily gone with Heaven or Las Vegas or even Gilmore Girls. But anyway, thanks for watching. Don't drink all the coke. Let me know some of your favorite art across different art forms. Sayonara and arigatou gozaimasu.